He investigated cases such as the Night Stalker, the Zodiac, and the Zebra Killings. Now, retired SFPD homicide inspector Frank Falzon has a new memoir out about some of the famous cases he worked. New at 10 tonight, KTVU investigative reporter Evan Cernofsky sat down with the legendary detective in a one-on-one -on -one interview. Evan. That's right, Julie. Frank Falzon is a fascinating man, and he recently turned 80 years old. He remembers all the smallest details about these infamous cases that have shaped the San Francisco we know today. San Francisco in the 1970s and 80s was a city in turmoil. Homicides and violent crime surged to all-time highs, prompting fear and despair in the streets. It was a murder on steroids. It was absolutely an insane time in San Francisco history. On the front lines of the turbulence was legendary homicide inspector Frank Falzon. I felt like I was playing an important role in keeping the city safe and the bully cowering and afraid to commit crime. Falzon worked for the SFPD for 28 years. 22 of them in homicide. He investigated cases like the Zodiac, the Zebra Killings, the Night Stalker, and some 300 others. Falzon is now 80 years old, and he just published a memoir detailing his life in the pre-DNA era, when it took old-fashioned shoe-leather detective work to solve cases. I looked at every case it was like a new ball game, and the only way you got to hit a home run is by solving that case. One of his best-known cases began in the summer of 1985. For months, an unknown satanic killer had been wreaking havoc in Southern California. This was a sick, pathetic, psychopath killer who killed for the sheer joy uh, of being a Satan worshiper and offering up people to the devil. The so-called Night Stalker paid a visit to San Francisco, executing a husband and wife in this home near the zoo. This was truly a nightmarish scenario, something out of a horror film. Absolutely out of a horror movie. The man was uh, criminally insane and bent on hurting and killing. Jewelry stolen by the killer led Falzon across the bay to El Sobrante. That's where he tracked down the unidentified suspect's buddy, Armando Rodriguez. But when confronted inside a police car, Rodriguez didn't want to talk and challenged Falzon to fight. And one thing I learned a long time ago, somebody's fist comes up, that's, that's a challenge to fight. And I'm not going to take the first punch in the face. I threw the first punch. I hit him right in the eye. Rodriguez still wouldn't give up the name, and Falzon was done asking. As I'm coming over the seat, he throws his arms up in an X, and he says, Richard, Richard Ramirez, man, Richard Ramirez, that's the name. The interrogation broke the case wide open. Soon, Ramirez's face was plastered on every newspaper in the state. Residents in Southern California spotted Ramirez and took him down. Prime suspect in the 16 Night Stalker slings captured today in West Los Angeles. The SFPD held a press conference that same day. Photograph ultimately, I believe, uh, believe uh, cleared this case this morning. So this case moved quick once the break came. Seven years earlier, Falzon was at the center of another one of the city's most infamous cases. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. Somebody I trusted, somebody I cared for, somebody I thought as a kid brother was the suspect. Uh, um, it was crazy, absolutely insane. The killer was former supervisor Dan White. Falzon's friend and former teammate on the SFPD's softball team. Falzon took White's confession inside the Hall of Justice. And then it, it just came to me, and then that was it. And then I, I just shot him. Were you conflicted at all that this was your friend that had just <clears throat> admitted to it? I was friend second, inspector first. I had a job to do. And I was going to do that job to the best of my ability. White later killed himself inside his garage after a jury cleared him of murder. In February 1992, on his 50th birthday, Falzon turned in his badge and gun and called it a career. 
and he still holds the same beliefs he did all those years ago. There should never be a tolerance by anybody for any reason for violence, never. We've got a lot more from this interview on our website, ktvu.com, including many more details on those notorious cases. You can also pick up a copy of Falzon's book on his website, frankfalzon.com. Reporting live in the studio, Evan Cernofsky, KTVU, Fox 2 News.